And welcome, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello. So this is uh, for uh, everyone who just uh, click on our, on our link. This is the session zero of a very, very short uh, show where we will uh, spend a few episodes uh, trying out the uh, role-playing game called Not the End. My name is Fabio. I'm one of the game designers of the game. And with me are Marco, Arturo, and Vincenzo. Hi, everyone. Hi. Yeah. Uh, we will be trying the, um, a, a, short, a short game, maybe uh, a few sessions of, of, not, of not the end. And uh, today, uh, the, for, for the first session, it will just be uh, character creation and also setting creation, because uh, not the end is a very fiction first uh, kind of game. And uh, it's, um, it, it is uh, quite simple to um, create your own, your own setting. Uh, it's very straightforward. Uh, there are very few steps uh, to follow. And uh, it can be done uh, quite easily. So uh, in, this, uh, in this session zero, we will begin by uh, describing uh, the, the broad strokes of the setting. And then we will delve into the details while making the characters. I would, so we will... uh, I would like to add that uh, creating the setting for Not the End is very organic and is done together with the players. The is not only uh, like uh, on the shoulders of the narrator, for example. Yes, you can uh, you can uh, you can use any kind of setting. You can use a setting that is already established. If you want to play in the Star Wars world, you can. If you want to uh, delegate everything to the narrator, you can. But the the standard way and the most fun way is to make it together. So uh, we were talking before, and uh, we decided on a kind of different spin from the traditional fantasy setting. So we will be playing in a world that uh, right now is uh, transitioning from uh, standard medieval fantasy towards a more modern era with uh, a bit of technology and uh, where uh, uh, the, uh, there is no more room for monsters, basically. And uh, my players will be playing three of these monsters that uh, are finding increasingly difficult to find room to exist uh, in this world where humanity is slowly uh, expanding uh, its civilization uh, in, every, in every corner that used to be dark and mysterious. Uh, so uh, the, the first things we need to decide uh, for, for a first setting, besides uh, the very first uh, decision that it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fantasy, it's uh, roughly in a... Uh, in the in this period, we need to decide uh, where is it set. As in, it's a fantasy world, but inspired by by which uh, country in this medieval slash uh, rena re Renaissance period? Should we make something standard mm -hmm. like uh, England, France? Should we play more to our strengths and say Italy? You want to make something <clears throat> different? May I suggest that um, I was rereading Earthsea some yeah. like Ursula again, and uh, maybe it's you know the pandemic talking and being homestruck all the time. But uh, I'd love to travel a lot, and I'd love to travel by sea if possible. So, what if this would, was a setting made of like small islands, larger islands, few larger islands, but having boat as a um, main mean of travel basically so kind of a or if yeah. you want to make it more relevant to real life uh, i think venice is the closer to yeah we, we can, can do hear. something with a, a venice or even a mediterranean vibe to it well, maybe uh, the uh, all the different uh, um, uh, taking taking inspiration from the different uh, re republics uh, uh, the merchant republics uh, really? of the period uh, yeah, it, can, it, can be like, it can be like uh, the archipelagos of Greece, like yeah, with something, yeah, something like that, something like the mainland that. Uh, close by. That's fine. That's fine. And uh, like that. uh, what type of uh, technology do you want to aim for? Like uh, um, the three musketeers, so the 1600s, mm -hmm. uh, maybe something more like uh, uh, the, the very first uh, steamboats and. Uh, uh, maybe I don't know cannons. Uh, or what what yeah. kind of uh, Renaissance uh, level of technology do you want yeah. to strike? I personally would prefer like 
a slightly higher level of uh, technology. So like the 1800s, like uh, the very first trains, the very first steamboats? I would like steam machines at least, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, OK. Yeah. yeah. So we can do this, maybe like the, um, yeah. the, the there's like uh, optical relays for the for very first telegraphs using mm -hmm. light instead of electricity. Maybe we can do something like this. So humanity is quite a bit advanced right now. It's uh, it's it, we are in the early modern period. So roughly right. 1800s in in our world, right? Yeah. But being, but being like a fantasy world, it can be that all the technology actually is is taking the the magic away of yeah. the world so is it exploiting the magic to achieve uh, something like technology or mm -hmm. is it actually destroying the magic uh, what what are you suggesting i i think that uh, they're exploiting the magic yeah i think one so, does not exclude the other because it's if you yeah. exploit, then you are slowly consuming it. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so, so basically, we are saying that magic is the, fo the, 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 the fossil fuels of this world, and they are already in the at, at the end of their of their supply. Yes. Yeah. But just so to be clear. Are... Sorry, guys, but so they are kind of high technology versus our like. Uh, I still don't know if this is a community or villages or different people being kind of oppressed, but so humanity's advanced and we are technologically speaking behind, or that's like the average, the standard, and we live in that kind of steampunk world. Um, maybe... You can decide this for yourself. I, I was mm -hmm. imagining like uh, as civilization spreads, you are finding uh, less and less corners of the world where you can keep your way of life. Right. So uh, you used to be a werewolf roaming the, the fields mm -hmm. of, uh, and now you are you need to stay in the corners because there are mm -hmm. Napoleonic armies uh, traveling through mm -hmm. the fields and they will destroy you with cannons. Uh, That's what we, I we was thinking. The technology. Please. I mean, Pardon? what? I think we don't need the technology in most cases because we are, in, in, in a sense, above the technology. Mm. We are on a different level for yeah. because they uh, are exploiting part of our culture and our beings yeah. for uh, I creating this I would like to say that we are the magic that they are exploiting. We are part exactly. of the magic so that we, are exploiting. We don't need that technology. Mm -hmm. Right. So are you saying that you are probably somewhat hunted I mean, uh, I mean, yeah. it would be needing the, saying that we need the technology. It's like saying the sun needs electric power. Okay, yes, that's perfect. So, okay, so you are, if 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 like a, a, a small farming community sees you, they are scared. But if a politician or, or an army or mm -hmm. uh, an ent entrepreneur sees you, he sees an opportunity. He sees something that needs to be captured and exploited. That's what what we are saying. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay, yes. that's fine. That's and perfect. maybe and part that's of the we, reason why... We are... go, go. No, go ahead, please. Yeah, the, the, that's why we are looking for places of peace away, hidden. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the, I think that in a world like this, there will be like a monster that organized to fight back. Okay, so you are somewhat organized. You're not just three stray monsters uh, bending together to survive. It can be both, but I think that in the world, in the great, uh, in the great expanse of the world, there will be like a community that don't want to do anything to do, with, don't want to have anything to do with humans. The one that actually uh, might help little community of humans to keep them secret. There might mm -hmm. be the one that says, no, let's go and destroy all humans because yeah. they are destroying mm -hmm. us. I mean, in, so in Venice... It's... Oh, sorry, go ahead. So it can be like a <clears throat> bit and pieces. We can be part of the same community. We can decide what kind of community we are part of. Or maybe we are looking for a community, hoping there is one. Yeah. Maybe well, we well, just well, live was... under the assumption there is a safe place for us, and that could be a... Kind of a... What I was thinking... Um... For example, in a Venice-like setting, then there could be one small island, uh, a little bit, you know, far away from the others, where a lot, a lot. I mean, a, a small community of 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 monsters live, and 
they found some way you know to to coexist with the rest of the of the city so there may be even there might be even some be some trade i don't know and then from time to time some uh pirates or even you know merchants they come and they try to 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 kidnap somebody so there is some uh, a delicate equilibrium there, some, something that... Yeah, I, I am guessing that uh, the, the large empires uh, or uh, merchant republics of the world actually uh, are, the, their government are trying to uh, exploit monsters and whatever. But uh, of course, there will be uh, an opposition, a dissent among the humans that wants uh, uh, to coexist with Decent the magical people, creatures. Yeah. And uh, yes. that that's fine. That's fine. I think... Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's not the standard. I mean, they're, they are at best, they are weird people, weird uh, uh, isolationists. At, at worst, they are branded traitors. But I mm -hmm. think there should be, definitely should be uh, uh, far away communities where uh, mag m magical creatures and we humans can, can work this. together. And just to be sure, mm -hmm. I think the answer, I think I know the answer, but we are not monsters in the like evil sense of the word we are we are monsters meaning that we are just something human. that's not entirely I, thi I think from the point of view of, of humans you could be seen as, seen evil. as. i mean a, a, just as for a zebra a lion is evil i mean right. a, a, that's you're scary you're scary and your biology mm -hmm. sometimes can require something damaging to the humans your right. very nature can require something else. it can yeah. it's it, you, you don't need to be but all right it, it could it, be it saying i could be a vampire so um, maybe yeah, i can if you are a vampire of course uh your 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 own if, okay so there are many myths and many mythologies uh mm -hmm. part of the fun of making a fantasy setting in at the end is also defining which kind of mythology we are referring to because there are a hundred types of vampires so we we will need to describe this but definitely that's something we, we can work with you have to define if you're shiny or not first of all yes <laughs> you have to that's right yeah if i don't want to go there because now i don't want to play with you anymore if you are shiny <laughs> yeah. you, you actually are shiny like, i don't know if it's a webcam or something but you uh, yeah. kind of <laughs> and Bebe and going back to the to this community, I mean, I think we could either be a part of this community with some specific goal, I don't know, or we can also be a strand, a strand, and looking for a community. Maybe yes, because it's, I mean, yes. the, the three of us together would not survive. Yes, uh, I think. Uh, I mean, the, the 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 adventure will be quite short, so there will be a, a defined goal that we can work in the setting but your larger goal can definitely be this and the, the adventure can follow like one step in this search yeah mm -hmm. one step in I, th search. I think that if we have personal goals that is to find uh, something then that can put us together but then if we find ourselves to do an adventure because we are we band together that can be like part of our life but that doesn't mean that me and my monster and your monster wants to do the same thing overall mm -hmm. okay so let's start by um okay first i will ask you this are the civilization is strictly human there are no other civilized races strictly wow. human. so, so they strictly kind of raised everything to the ground no, or, maybe, or maybe, or maybe, maybe there, wasn't. there never was a, a, an orc civilization or an elven civilization in this world it's mm -hmm. a fantasy world we're making it up mm -hmm. so yeah. humans just evolved to be the only sentient species without magic oh. but yeah. they have uh, had our uh, qualities that uh, let them build civilization and uh, to to the expense of magical creatures. Maybe they Ooh. just reproduce at a faster rate or something. So maybe, uh, maybe. I, I I can only see us as being few in numbers. Yes, yeah, you definitely are. You you, you yes. were before, and you are uh, and you're getting more, uh, more. You know, more and more uh, yeah. dwindling. Being magical creature, we might be like living for thousands of years. So who cares if it's only like five of my species? Yeah, and, you know. And <laughs> maybe you are so. Like and maybe you are so. 
uh, maybe you have reached the point in which uh, your your species or race or whatever you want to call it they didn't even care about reproducing or just because they live to since forever maybe you are too attached to your own thoughts and whatever yeah. reasoning you're doing yeah. philosophy yeah. Yeah. i mean you could also be something like a golem that mm -hmm. doesn't really have a concept of reproduction Sure. Unless the one who put uh, the little message in his head was a bit of a pervert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so uh, just a second. I will get here. Okay, so do we want to create uh, a few locations, a few details, or the, do these details come out, come together when we make characters? Or do we want like uh, establish like one city and maybe uh, two or three traits of this city? Hmm. I see so. that uh, if we are like uh, let's say that we are in a uh, independent city, not a no very big, a uh, bit like Venice. That uh, okay, okay, and there is where there is interaction like me. We we might just start that we arrive in we just arrive in that city because they said there's a community of monsters in that city and see how it is. We might start from there. We can define a bit how that city is. But the question is, can we freely move in the city or I think I not. I, I mean I, 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 I okay, this is this is something we can discuss. So are monsters just discriminated or are actually hunted? Because in my head it was the, the second one, but maybe mm -hmm. we want to make something well, different. For me as well, yes. Unless, I, I think unless a single monster is so powerful that nobody dares attack bother. Okay, so okay, so maybe you are also we are saying that uh, you are mon monsters of uh, mid mid middling power. None mm -hmm. of you is like a great dragon, or yeah. difficult to spot or recognize, yeah. or, kill. or kill in general. Yeah, or yeah. kill. Maybe, you know, maybe maybe the humans have special specialists mm -hmm. that uh, that uh, you need to pay big money to hunt down uh, the, the monsters. So a small community lives with the monsters because cannot actually afford to hunt that monster. I mean, honestly, I, I don't expect to see you know in a in a human met, um, market shop or whatever you know ten monsters uh, roaming around. But from time to time, you might see uh, I don't know uh, not a great dragon, but still some some bigger giant right. that yeah. like an ogre just the, just the streets. And, and what do you do with the giant? You just let it, let it pass. So. The, the smaller monsters probably live uh, hidden by the collaborationists. There are humans that maybe host uh, like a, a gnome or a sprite in their uh, in their basement. They they hide uh, like a, a leprechaun in their garden, something like this. <laughs> with the gnomes. Yeah, the gnome the with, with, uh, <laughs> with the hat, and uh, yeah. Yeah. we can do this. So, or uh, uh, the bigger monsters uh, are somewhat less troubled because they need the, you need an army or a, a small group of specialists to hunt down a big monster like a, a giant or a dragon. Uh, but I'm sensing that you want to play the smaller ones. It's probably more yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that a middle, a middle, middle ground uh, Mid monster, uh, they tend to get together in small community and then do very like <laughs> scarce. Uh, meeting with the humans when they really need it, or they try to keep by themselves. I mean, this would also explain why these communities actually survive, because maybe each community has a mid or bigger monster that actually scares everybody as off. I mean, yeah, like a boss. Like, yeah. May I ask a question? Uh, are there things such as um, I don't want to use the word mutants, but um, do we know of uh, any monster born by human parents or something like that? Or uh, do we know of any like human who had some kind of relationship with a monster or a creature in general so that there are hybrids or closer ties? I have not thought about it, so we can decide. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, just saying, uh, okay, so I will say this. 
uh, as I will be playing the, the bad guys and the world, I, I think that I, I will be basing my the, the government of these humans on the, the very um, auto, um, absolute uh, on the of the absolute in, imperialism that there was in the 1800s. So the government doesn't really like that. Mm -hmm. But if you live in, on the fringe of, of the empire and um, you happen to find something like this, it's not unheard of. I mean, okay. when the troops come by on their way to their, to their next war, you need to hide, you need sure. to... But it can, it can exist, it can exist. You know what? I would, uh, considering how the game works, how the system works and how uh, characters evolve and everything, I would love to play this seeing how this happened like uh, uh how things went downhill however that will require a longer campaign and i believe that for this very short yes, specific this we have it's better if we start with things already yeah really i already established this is actually uh, this is just a, an example for uh, for mm -hmm. our listeners uh, so it will be kind of short it will be probably four to six one hour session mm -hmm. But under normal conditions, and like if this, if we had to play, if we had time to play, I would love to see my character growing and our characters growing, responding to a situation that's changing and changing and getting worse and worse. Oh, yeah. Because I believe that's the type of evolution that we could be like that really be interesting, interesting to play. But yeah, maybe this in the future. Actually, this is actually a good time to make a little uh, introduction to the game oh, itself. Wow. Yeah. Because we are talking, we, we, we were talking a lot about the setting, but we haven't talked about the game yet. So uh, in not the end, the characters are defined by uh, a cluster of, uh, of traits, which are just words or very simple phrases. There is, uh, uh, your, your character sheet is just uh, a, a beehive made of hexagons, uh, and you write each trait inside one of these hexagons. How close an hexagon is to the next one can uh, inspire how the character grows, because uh, if you have, uh, if you are, for example, a, a surgeon, and you have a precise and intelligent next to each other, maybe you want to grow this, uh, this small cluster on your sheet into surgery or uh, as a skill or something like that. Um, there are no hard rules on what you can write in your hexagons. It, uh, they are um, defined by, as archetypes, qualities, and skills based on where they are. We can actually... Uh, show a character sheet for a sample character right now uh, and so that you will uh, understand what I'm talking about but there is uh, not really any um, besides from the archetype which should be your uh, your how you will describe your character in just one sentence uh, there is actually not much difference uh, in, from qualities and abilities. Uh, you can use, uh, as, as we can see here, you can use uh, um, adjectives as qualities. You can use uh, either verbs as skills, but also just uh, uh, items or uh, uh, gener generic uh, qualities, or you can just um, use a, a, an example of the setting that uh, is linked to your uh, to your character so there is no actually a rule you can um, describe them any way you want and the way you grow in not the end whenever you face a test that uh, you think it's crucial you think it's very very important to your character before resolving this test you, de you declare so you say this test is some is something that my character holds very dear is something that uh, uh, it's uh, a test where he will put every ounce of, of himself and it the outcome of this test will change him or her so uh, depending on how the test goes how how well or how badly 
the test goes, you can then add another trait, and this is how and this is how you fill out your uh, your hive of hexagon. Basically, you you fill out this. Uh, uh, these empty hexagons with uh, with new traits, depending on how the uh, the test went. If it went uh, poorly, maybe it's something like a scar, something that uh, a lesson that you learned that uh, it reminds you of uh, past failings. If it went very well, maybe it's a new skill you developed or a new quality you find yourself uh, you had all along and it just now came to, to the surface. That's it. So yes, it will be very very fun to play uh, along. Uh, we we actually played uh, for the the former Kickstarter in Italy a lot of long campaigns, uh, fifty or sixty sessions, and characters develop uh, in uh, unexpected ways because you don't decide before w which new trait you want. Just based on the outcome of the trial, of the test, you think, okay, I think my character will will develop in this way. Yeah. So, I think we can start making characters then. Someone already has an idea on the kind of monster yes, they want I to play. Do. I definitely do. Mm -hmm. I want to play a troll. You want to play a troll? Not yes. the, the... An internet troll, you mean? Yeah, an internet troll. Yeah, I'm troll. already <laughs> here. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> the, the worst kind of monster. So. <laughs> yes. So, uh, what kind, kind, kind of troll do you want to do? You want would you like to play? Like a, a, I don't think like a, a, fro, a frozen from the no, movie. Troll. No, I was. A thinking, Dungeons and Dragons troll. I was thinking a mix between uh, the Ludo from Labyrinth. Oh wow! <laughs> and. Uh, <coughs> and uh, and the monster, the classic uh, Dungeons and Dragon monster troll, you know, like. Uh, so I, how big are you? I think that I'm like a good uh, three and a half meter. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you're big. Uh, you're yeah. big and strong. Big, big, lumpy, ugly, just like me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we got the muscles, right? Yeah, you are the only well, one. Uh, the, the, because the idea of my character is that no, the muscle. Wow, so you're a peaceful giant. Uh, kind of. I think uh, I imagine that he's a very, like, uh, uh, because he's strong, because he lives a lot, because he's difficult to kill. And uh, in this situation, I think that uh, my character lived, like, a long, long time, and uh, he takes care of the smallest one. He became, mm -hmm. like, a, like a, a shield. He's yeah. is, is very nurturing. Mm-hmm. That like yeah. nurturing is definitely a trait that I'm gonna put on it. Yeah, it's, okay. it's like really like a, so, taking care of the small thing, even if it's this colossal beast that is ugly, and somebody says, that, "Oh my god, I'm dead." It's, it's quite gentle, a bit like Ludo from Labyrinth. You know, you're making it surprisingly easy for all of us to hate the bad guys because when they are coming after you, that's gonna be a matter of. Oh, uh, don't worry, I can punch. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no! I'm just saying that it's gonna you, get impersonal. You, if they... you, you're yeah. like a, a grand a grandfather with uh, with with a slipper or with a rolled up newspaper. Uh, <laughs> oh, you already yeah, see food of the mountain do. with the kids. Oh my god! Uh, I would I would do like a, a, the archetype. I would put something like forest troll. So okay, uh, getting in our. Uh, web app that we are we are using for this uh for this type of uh, okay i think we can show the characters you can get into the room this is just a beta so it will be hopefully ready for uh, for the kickstarter or slightly later uh all right so i'm i'm gonna share my character sheet on that page okay are we just so, gonna put a placeholder name for now, or? Yeah, I think we. I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I get the name of my of my character. Ah. I just came to mind when I was talking about the uh, the troll. His name is Catch. Catch. Okay, so oh, it's already compiled then. Uh, 
No, yeah, I was doing it, but I think I'm going to change a couple of things. I want to talk with you guys because, mm -hmm. you know, that's how you create character as well. These are a few ideas, but if they're better coming from you, they're more than welcome. You know, this the idea there. So I'm going to. I'm gonna okay, start so, from zero. So I start for with our first, listeners. So. For our listeners, the the central uh, um, the the hexagon in the middle is the archetype, and it's what you will describe your character in just one one or two words. Then there is the inner uh, circle of uh, of character of of traits, and then the the outer one. Uh, we suggest you we usually suggest to uh, you, you you cleaned up. You cleaned up everything. Yeah, because I'm starting again. Okay, <laughs> you're starting again. So as an archetype, you will put for a stroll. That's for sure. Let's go then. Okay. Uh, but the point is that I have to save one by one and start again. So the, uh, okay, I understand. So it's difficult to do with this up in this way. Uh, yes. But I can, I can do it. I can do same At character. least uh, people can, can see what, what we are making. So if, if you said if the same one... character and then you just uh, uh, update again. Yes. Yeah. OK. okay. I, I, I write something. I save it. You reload. And you can see what's yes, happening. Yes, that's fine. So, so you were saying nurturing. Nurturing, sure. absolutely. And I will do like. Uh, uh, nurturing being is like really my soul. It's not just something that I do. It's what I am. Nurturing soul, nurturing being. Okay. Better okay. To you. That's nice. Meanwhile, do you guys already have some ideas to uh, make the party together so that we you can bounce off each other's ideas, maybe something like that? Because also in in your traits, you can put a relation to another. Uh, to another character, if you want, uh, such as I need to uh, mm -hmm. protect catch. I don't think catch will need protection, but uh, but if you do a small one that need protection, you might be part of my trait. For example, mm. you know, um, I I might have something, but I th it ties with uh, the idea of characters that I have, and since it's kind of peculiar, I'd like to see what you guys guys think about it before. So I'm. Because I have a couple of ideas, the one that I am, you know, that I'm thinking that I, that I love to try, uh, as I think I mentioned in some in, while trying to set up with today, I'd love to play uh, to play what I would describe as a haunted sword, a cursed sword, or something like, or to be more precise, a haunting spirit, which is bound to a bound sword. to a sword. And okay. Just to to give you some details on this, I still don't know how this should work, and that that's where I definitely need your help. But my idea will be that at some point in the past, a long time ago, I think I was a warrior of some some type, maybe a knight, maybe something like that, and I left home to go do battle somewhere, and I promised my significant other that I would have returned. But I failed to do so. So my spirit was caught into the sword. And now my aim is, after so many centuries or decades or whatever, I'd love to go back home. Which implies like probably being thrown in a grave or just being uh, thrown in a river. But simply, simply put, in some way, finally close the circle. But do you know and where my home is? And... This I don't know, but uh, my idea would be that maybe I am the one that needs to be protected along the way. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if this is too much. Uh, I know it's... No, um, it's, kind of it's, a... it's definitely doable. It's... Uh, uh, okay, so this is actually a good... Um... A, a good test, a good stress test, I would say, for the system, because uh, as, as I was saying before, we need to define mm -hmm. at least a few ground rules for every mythology we, we put in, into place. A troll is somewhat straightforward. I mean, mm -hmm. more or less everyone knows what a troll is. If you are a spirit hunting and bound to a sword, okay, we can do it. So first of all, you used to be mm -hmm. human, right? I think so. Maybe I don't even remember. 
okay so right now you are a being of magic mm -hmm. but you may have been a human at some at some point what can you do without a human to possess <laughs> i think i just stay there waiting and waiting for someone to get cursed by the sword and that but might be why so many centuries passed by can you at least talk uh i don't think so i think it's uh, okay. i feel the character i think i see the character as a parasite of sorts if you will okay just I like your stereotype D D &D sword if you can even talk that's, that may be a bit too much i that's think that a, he did that that might at least be able to talk because otherwise yeah, that uh, could work that could work maybe you can talk like in some kind of uh, telepathic or empathic yeah. mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. in the mind oh, yeah, of that, yes yeah sorry uh, i was thinking talk like in literally making sound but i think ah, you yeah, definitely you're not, need you're to not interact. Sort of, uh, uh who framed roger rabbit <laughs> no no yeah, yeah. That's, good, that's a good one <laughs> but, but i was talk, thinking do you communicate they say you communicate but you communicate only with the wielder or with people within think, a certain range i think i can communicate telepathically with people in range or creatures in range when i have a wielder i communicate through the wielder so kind of i kind of possess whoever and what if you are well. not i know able it's a threat possess, what if you're not able to possess the wielder like say for example the wielder is catch Mm -hmm. and for some I reason you, you can't possess it then what what happens or even I'm if stuck, it, if, if, I'm stuck well, and I need well, someone to get me a new wielder. Well, what, 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 what to give you that, that uh, you possess something ages ago and that, that somebody that you possess is dead, but the magic of the sword is bringing him around anyway. Maybe. It's kind of so, a... you, so you're kind of an undead, but you're not actually the undead. The undead is just a yeah, skeleton. You're, you're a skeleton. skeleton. It's, it's a sword. wicked and burning situation. But it's the sword of your character. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay, if if you can actually possess other living creature, we need to set up some ground rules, though. Of course, I mean, we need to decide how 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 does it work? So anyone who touches you automatically is under your influence, or mm -hmm. what? And of course, uh, I will caution you to use this power, of course, in, of course uh, with, okay. without being OP. Or, or let me roll back a second here because I uh, this. You reminded me of a beautiful uh, little game that I tried some years ago at this point called The Skeletons, in which the characters are skeleton guarding a dungeon. So yes. I might be, not, not the sword itself, but the animated skeleton because of kind of the same background story. So the moment in which I will return the sword, I will choose to exist, therefore breaking the curse. Okay, so the, the sword is something like your phylactery, something like that? Maybe, maybe. So yes, that I mean, might be... I, mm -hmm. I mean, it works as if it was your phylactery. It's not really I your think soul. So. Just... I think so. Okay, okay. So if I lose it, maybe I don't make my way home. Because maybe I have a limited time frame before I collapse into ashes or something. So or, it's my or weapon. You are bound but to get my... it back. Pardon? Oh, you are bound to get it back. If or maybe I'm bound to get it back. You have to get it back. Like that's your 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 bound. And maybe that's why <laughs> maybe that's why <laughs> people is afraid of us of people or uh, creatures like me. In that, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm a monster from their point of view, but from my point of view, it's a matter not of not of survival, but of. Um, can I say uh, mission? Mission, yeah, uh, aim, task. Um. So uh, make make a character as well, and mm -hmm. a character sheet as well, so that we can see yours uh, as well here. We said catch that um, while we were speaking uh, is adding traits, uh, taking inspiration mm -hmm. from real life. So let me create a new one. <laughs> uh, yeah, please call it bone. Bone. Okay. <laughs> like, uh, Just bone. 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 Bones. Bones, good old bones. bones. We, will, we, will, we will find uh, a name. Uh... <laughs> okay, let me say bones and uh, hold on. Let me join the room here. Yeah, okay. yeah, still having what happened. Okay, so we will see your shit as well 
you know, a little okay, while. Start, While we're talking, I, I put just the first layer, so my qualities. And I figured that I gotta be lonely. Maybe, maybe not, not, not in the sense that I'm a, a misanthropist or anything like that, but I definitely feel lonely because I've been alone for such a long time. And maybe I'm the only uh, creature of my kind that I know. Uh, this okay. should probably be changed now. Rather than up in spirit, maybe. So you are mm -hmm. okay. So your in uh, your essence is being a haunting spirit, but uh, uh, yeah. I was going to you, rephrase that. So maybe uh, right, because right now you, you can you cannot haunt anything yeah, beside right. your former body. So let, let me put skeleton in the meantime. Then maybe I can yes, rephrase of, it. Of course, of course. But we have a rough idea of what you want to play. Mm -hmm. Vincenzo? So my idea was as I went through all uh, extremes, um, but my latest idea was uh, fire elemental. Mm. A fire elemental, okay. Fire. fire elemental that in this setting would be, and that's why I wanted to have steam engines. In this setting, they would be exploited to in, into power plants. To create oh, definitely, the definitely. Yes, you, you are like the the. Since you are so, since you are being a being of pure magic power, you are also one of the easiest ones to exploit. I mean, uh, for for a troll like uh, like Marco, for like Catch, it's kind of hard to figure out a way how to extract the magic uh, using his uh, mm -hmm. uh, regenerating powers. Maybe you can use it his blood to make medicine. But you you are it's just this. You are an eternal flame, a living flame. The angrier you get, the hotter you get. Let put him in in a power plant and just make. Ah. make Steam engines oh, go. They got water and steam, and uh, my idea yeah. was that uh, well, you hate water, but they put you in, in boilers. Exactly. Mm -hmm. but the, mm -hmm. so my character was actually so in one of these plants and managed to escape. Um, and I have another idea there, but not, that's not important. And from I mean, from how this looks like, I would say that this is a changing type of element. I mean, something that in, in a normal situation can could look like the human torch but depending on how much um, external fire it consumes can can grow bigger or, or smaller and, and so on okay so that's nothing not nothing that has a defined shape or mm. or anything that's something something that can adapt to the external circumstances so okay so but I you think. are at, at heart a living flame that can grow and yes. take different shapes but you are a living flame yes and then for great, you know, great to interact with, sorry a great archetype uh, living flame yes and the for the you know, for for practical uh means then it can usually look like a like a human torch but in general i mean could be anything and as a character, I mean, like, like the the traits, I would see it as a as a warm spirit. So something, you know, like um, that naturally something like the, the the fire in the in 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 your house that that keeps you warm. Not necessarily something that that destroys. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can modulate your your heat to be more either warm and uh, and. Uh, pleasant or you can become a, a force of destruction but your standard state is being like a hearth of a, yes. a, a fireplace in a house like a warm okay. fireplace something a warm fireplace yes so yeah. uh, uh get, get into into the room create yes. your own character and uh... so, so you're not inherently violent so to speak just no. like uh, fire itself it all depends on whether yeah i don't have a name sorry mm -hmm. uh, okay I would, I would come up with a name but because i have a couple yeah the names uh, if you if, we don't need to come up with the name right now if uh j just have an idea of the character then yes. for the next session when we actually start playing we will decide the names if you don't don't have so, it right meanwhile now. i'm adding something that i want to keep the qualities i think i kept the previous one yeah 
So nurturing being a stone and dirt is what I'm made of. <laughs> so this is this is your okay. You you just put in a, a test name, okay? Yeah, yeah. Well, because I have something, but I will redo it. So, so I think, and uh, if we want to explain here, I think the nurturing being and being made of stone and dirt, a lot of critters like to live on me. Like, like uh, a... I, might, I might have like a, a beehive <laughs> on my back. I might have like a, a, a little mice and a squirrel living around. The, in, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm like a, a, a living warren or a living terrarium, something like that. Ka <laughs> kind of that, yeah. That's how I imagine it. Uh, I would like to do one of the one of the external uh, abilities. Yes, because I'm made of stone and dirt, to, and the house for critter to have uh, something like a, um, I don't know, maybe maybe yeah, a, a beehive that actually so, is a, it's a combat yes. thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's take a moment here to uh, explain how the the sheet works. So uh, you you can see that Marco has put house for critters. Close, close with nurturing being and stone and dirt. Now, nurturing being and fearsome are somewhat opposite traits. So he put them on opposite side of of, uh, of his archetype, and uh, in this way he can, for example, uh, let's say that he tries to uh, calm. Uh, a, a small uh, a small creature uh, to uh, to get some information out out of it and the, the test goes poorly maybe he adds uh, a trait close, close close to fearsome if it goes well maybe he adds a trait close to nurturing being this is what i say what i mean when i say you don't really know how your character is going to grow because uh, if you put uh, different uh, possibly clashing traits on your sheet, it can grow in an organic and unexpected way. So meanwhile, uh, Vincenzo has put something on his sheet right now. Yeah, that's not much. Yes. So what so I was talking are... about is, sorry, go ahead. Yes, so uh, you are um, making incendiary and warm two traits that are okay. They can be close, but they can also be a different interpretation of the same uh, of the same concept. So it, they're not close by, but they're not opposites. That's fine. And uh, just as as Marco did, they don't need to be one word. They can be like uh, a, a small concept, a small descriptors uh, um, for your for your character. Arturo, have you put some traits as well? I'm yes, not all of them. I'm just working on it. Um, you have to save it at the yeah. time that you modify it. Yeah, I did. I think okay. you. I think uh, maybe I will reload the part. So the um, remember the. Uh, I think that uh, uh, okay, sword fighting. Okay, last one standing. That's perfect. Uh, okay, so usually we suggest to start with one archetype that's the mm -hmm. uh, the the central uh, the central uh, uh, trait then three out of six in the inner circle and four of the outer circle that's uh, the suggestion and for the missing one this is where i was stuck i was wondering that uh, perhaps as we discussed before my source should be a trait for me right yes okay so a, 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 Let's talk about the equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, re re resources in uh, not the end are usually handled in uh, in a narrative way. So uh, usually, uh, if you have something that mm, you you can have pretty much what is expected for your character to have. However, resources also have a mechanical impact because every test has a difficulty and a danger. I will decide the difficulty and the danger of the tests that uh, I will uh, ask you to pass based mm -hmm. on the, every kind of circumstance and your resources uh, factor into the, um, the circumstances. So if you are trying to hit uh, an enemy 200 meters away, 
uh, it's impossible with a stone you mm -hmm. if you are a human of course uh, it's impossible with a stone it's very hard with a longbow uh, it's diff difficult but not too difficult with uh, a sniper rifle for example so depending on the type of resource you have uh, some uh, tests are easier or harder that being said if you have an item that is just part of you you are not the same character without that item it should be a trait so excalibur should be a trait mm -hmm. for king arthur so yes uh, this is I uh, think so. yes i yeah, think I, that your sword I, it I could suggest, be that your, your sword maybe may have a name yeah uh, I would suggest to change the sword fighting with your mm -hmm. sword with your sword and get another because one if it makes you sense. Have the sword it makes sense that you can use it yeah makes sense i was actually thinking for a second that just to give just to make even more um incomprehensible the amount of time that i've passed on my own maybe the sword should become a weapon that was available even before swords were popular like a lance or something but maybe a spear sorry but maybe that's too much because uh, it remember that we are in uh, roughly the 1800s mm -hmm. so it, no uh, unless, sword, uh, unless you are like a cavalry saber there are mm -hmm. no more swords that's right that's so right. Uh, already being uh, like a two-handed sword or even a gladius uh, yeah. if you'd like uh, it's already something very very whole unique yes. so for the time being i'm gonna put the sword here as uh, as marco suggested instead of sword fighting so i'm left with another uh, ability if, and if you would like to keep the, the the concept of having the sword as the focus of your character mm -hmm. this trait let, let's call for for example your sword excalibur because mm -hmm. it's easier because unless the unless one. writing excalibur you could write as a trait i am actually excalibur for example okay right and, the, and this can work because in addition to using Excalibur as uh, as a um, as a fighting tool, you could also use this trait whenever someone targets your skeletal body, and mm -hmm. you are you are uh, making a test to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. You can use this trait because you are actually Excalibur. Mm -hmm. They they can hurt your your uh, skeletal body, but it's not really you. I think just a suggestion to, to I explain I how it can work. I think it makes sense, but I think I'm going to try it to Lonely. Because if you think about it, the backstory that I have in my mind, at least, is that the reason why I've become such a lonely spirit is because of, of my will to follow my sword instead of seeking for a peaceful life, for example. Yes. So I'm going to accept the suggestion, but that's going to be a part of me being a lonely creature just as skepticism i put it under lonely because i think that my intention was to express that i'm probably hard to fool or something like that the reason being that i'm so used to disregard other creatures uh, uh, feelings and existence that i've become skeptical but at the end of the day it's not something that i i'm 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 not i'm not smart i was <laughs> alone for such a long time that i don't trust others which might become a, a good thing maybe because yes there is so also an, another layer to this mm -hmm. if you used to be humans probably monsters used to be the enemy oh, so yeah, there's another right. layer to that probably mm -hmm. maybe your ancient memories are of fighting monsters rather than mm -hmm. and right now you are bending together with monsters fighting humans to regain your humanity it's yeah. And there I'm neither, right? I'm not among, uh, I mean, I am, but I don't feel that I belong with the monsters, but I'm not human at the same time. Uh, I, g I give you like a, a trait to explain uh, all the mm -hmm. sort. Uh, why don't you put, if you touch to lonely, uh, lonely, you can put a uh, 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 double edged sword because wow. it gives you life forever, but uh, mm -hmm. it's also a problem for you. Right. So you mean we, within the I am my sword trait? Yeah, it's all, it's all there, double-edged sword, because it gives you like uh, the power to do things, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you're bound to it. 
uh, I, I will explain another thing. Don't be, uh, if something is really, really important to you, don't be worried if uh, two traits uh, seem to seem to be together. Yeah. Because uh, you can, let's say you want to play, I don't know, uh, mm -hmm. in a cyberpunk world, a hacker, and you want to be just, I, I want to be the best hacker in the world. You can put hack hacker as uh, an archetype, then put uh, computers, uh, security systems, and cryptography as, I mean, you can, you can be as focused as you want, or you can be as sure. spread out as you want. It's, it's, it's not, I mean, if, if uh, you, uh, fill out a cluster of hexagons all together, you will make a more focused character, or you can spread it out. It's equally fun, honestly. Mm -hmm. I tried both, and it's equally fun. No. So, yeah. if, if this if this uh, thing about the sword is really important and you like think so. traits about it, you can I put so. traits about the sword. Okay, so now that's the... One more thing that you can do. If you put lonely close to resilient, skepticism is perfect between the two. Oh, that's right. Uh, that, that's a good point. I could move them. Because uh, be a skeptic, mm -hmm. you're resilient. You don't change your way of thinking right. as part of resilient. You're lonely. That creates... Because, because if you put it like this, yes, it gives you more mm -hmm. opportunity to, to cross. But... Uh, Seeing how your character is developing, it's nice to have all the cluster together in that case, because so, it's really like around that concept. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, because, for example, Let's mine, I, I yeah. separated because uh, the fact that I'm uh, that I'm uh, fear uh, fearsome is uh, is away from the other nature. I'm fearsome mm -hmm. because I'm a troll. Okay. But my nature is not that one, so they're not together in the cluster. So I've yeah. made quite some changes, and thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. Because I think that you definitely flipped my character, and I love it um, so far. And now so let's, I... go, let's go. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So uh, let's go back a bit to, to Vincenzo. We are, uh, you are closing to the, uh, to, we are getting towards the end of the episode. So I would like to uh, focus a bit more on the Vincenzo's character. I think you have to reload it. Because what I did, I actually moved incendiary next to warm because I think those are the two extremes of of its behavior, and yes. together they give this, they make it ever burning. Mm -hmm. They can grow and explode and and or get back to a you know like can come to a pilot flame, but in the end the pilot flame is always there. So the living flame, it's not something. If you want ever burning, it's could be a repetition of living flame, but it gives you a, a different. Just, what do uh, you mean by, by ever burning? That you can burn in very different. That uh, you can shape the, the type of fire you you are made of. You, you have, uh, you can be every aspect of the of the flame. That, yes, that's what you and, mean. And, and whatever you shrink, that, let's say that you start, you know, throwing flames all over the place, and then you shrink and you shrink and you shrink until to, at some point you become like a. Uh, almost not ashes but just you know that is a little the little spark before like the flames ignite embers, is... embers. yes yeah. embers. kind kind of yeah i understand a bit like a calcifer in uh our maybe yeah maybe something like that and 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 now that you talk about it maybe i actually have an ember inside me that is my core okay yes yeah. it could it could be so Okay, then, uh, okay, so for example, Vincenzo is making a very uh, focused character. So far, every focus. very focused, yeah. <laughs> every every uh, trait he put on, on his sheet is about uh, his, his being uh, a fire being. Uh, do, would you like to uh, develop, like, put some traits that uh, um, develop your personality? So, for example, on the other side, yes, I was thinking about on the other side of the of the sheet. I would like to something that describes the fact that um, there is no community of of living flames or fire elemental. I, I you know, they there there are uh, they don't uh, mate, they don't uh, live together, they don't I mean they're they're just, with each other exactly. So, 
<clears throat> by definition, it, it's 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 lonely, but it's <laughs> more than lonely. It's just unique or uh, completely mm -hmm. isolated, maybe and isolated. The, and is it something that you suffer, or is it something that you embrace? It's part of your nature. I mean, something that you, after thousands of years, it's something that you have to accept, at, at, at the very least, to accept. But I think it's 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 a nature. Yeah, but, but think think about what your what then your character does to other monsters with other monsters it's friendly to other monsters because it never that's, experienced that that's or the that's the worst part i mean it's uh, it is by itself friendly to other monsters but it doesn't um create strong bonds you okay, see so i'm helping so... i'm helping you i'm providing you the warmth that you need to survive but uh, I could live without you. I don't need you to survive. Okay, I will suggest you that you remove the manipulate fire trait that it doesn't really uh, tell any, anything more than we already know from everything else. Mm -hmm. And you put something like uh, I burn Bastard. alone mm -hmm. or something like that. Uh, uh, or maybe I burn for others. Uh, or yeah. I, I don't know, depending on how, on how you see it. I mean, do you see your warmth as a gift to your to your surroundings, uh, or you just keep burning? Just just no, just it's, it's something you know. that I can control. It's something that I can do. That I'm fond of doing. I'm happy to help other people. Okay, but by nature, I can uh, live alone, and I, I have lived alone for for centuries, probably. Okay, this is a very good contrast, actually, to explore. You can you can uh, put the towards the warm part of your shit. Uh, you can uh, maybe uh, expand the warm trait with something like warming others, or people warm up to me. <laughs> uh, maybe something like that. Use it uh, like uh, uh, use it like a little uh, a little mm -hmm. joke. You can use it like this. That works both ways. And on the other side, on the in in uh, incendiary yeah, side, yeah. you can uh, uh, ex explore the other side of your character. Mm -hmm. Vincenzo, may I ask a question about your character? Has yes. everyone ever worshipped you? Because I I, I I mean if I knew a creature made of fire which is not willing to kill me on sight, but uh, the opposite, like providing warmth and and I mean I, I could easily see uh, a religion versus a religious version of myself worshiping such a creature. So maybe you used to be some kind of spirit. It definitely happened because I mean I'm I'm not I'm probably lived for thousands of years so mm -hmm. yes before, you are before, exactly so You're before burning. humanity moved into technology and tried to exploit me they probably actually uh saw me as a god or some mm -hmm. or, or just a nature uh, spirit such as yes uh, pro probably more like uh, uh, a domestic spirit maybe mm -hmm. if you were in a small village you could provide warmth to the peasants that they, they did not exploit you too much because they were few and they were just a few a few families when civilization came they tried to use all of your power for big cities big power plants and that doesn't sit well with you i think that's probably a god maybe maybe too much mm -hmm. but i think it works How can you describe your uh, your uh, once being? Uh, I don't know, like uh, something like uh, I burned like a star, like uh, from your past to to describe that. You know, it was something like big for these people, and you are not anymore. I might be with you. I mean, if you want to explore that, mm. yeah, sure. And also, another yeah, thing I was wondering is whether you even remember uh, a time in which, uh, of course, nobody does, but in which you, you didn't exist or you didn't burn. So you ever burning goes both ways, right? So maybe you were there before. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the problem there is when you have this experience of thousands of years or whatever it is, mm -hmm. everything mixes up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... so 
you, you don't want to explore the fact that you have like a knowledge that nobody can rival uh because otherwise you you could uh, this ever burning could be uh, we can um when you make a trait that is uh on purpose so vague as ever burning it helps to define it so uh, if you were saying i lived through the ages i remember everything i i will let you use ever burning whenever you are facing like a test to decipher an ancient scripture because you were once in a brazier in a temple of that god because okay that's why i, I would say a little through the ages is something that i can that i can imagine there not that i not but not i know everything because i really think that this life that spans this this uh, enormous amount of time doesn't l let you the possibility to know everything but just you experienced a lot of things you might remember glimpses of it and uh but i wouldn't say knows everything so i lead through the ages yes this is something that uh okay probably is the character okay so i can put it on the other you, you side. can put that right like uh, i i seen it all mm -hmm. you know something uh Oh, Which, something like uh, that reminds me of dot yeah. dot dot. I've seen it all. It can kind of has. I mean, it implies both an infinite knowledge or an attitude, which is yeah, sort of yeah. It's it's very good for a flame uh, for a flame person. I've seen it all. Mm -hmm. You know, because oh yeah, I've seen it all. I go in that yeah, whatever. Absolutely. Nobody can nobody can do me anything. I've been around for so long. So we are all. But then I'm, I'm I started to think that ever burning is more of a trait than an ability. Yeah, I mean it, it doesn't really. Uh, yes. uh, it, I, I mean you can you can move it around. It, it works uh, as an ability. It works uh, as a quality. It's not really. Uh, it's unless, it's really up to you. Unless you specify, because if it's uh, ever burning uh, mind, that means that you look for knowledge ever burning knowledge that means that you have already that you know oh it can be like a ever burning uh, um uh aim you know goal that uh, you want to finish the mission that you don't stop in front of anything so you define a bit more if what i put it as a trait burning. it's more in that direction yes Yes, we in the in the different playtests and campaigns we found out that uh, uh, du double meanings are very fun as traits. Uh, so of course, for 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 a fire elemental, it's fun to put stuff like uh, if you were more uh, impulsive, something like hothead or something like that. It would be very fun. But we are working towards that, and I think it comes out very well with the ever burning knowledge or something in that. Uh, Try and shape. reload it because I yes. did a little change. Uh, Manipulate fire is still there. Maybe we can take it away. But... Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, we don't need to end today with the okay. perfect sheets, but we already have a very strong idea of our characters. We have a, 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 a living flame that has seen it all, a li li uh, has lived forever, basically, and uh, likes to warm other people, but doesn't like to be exploited by civilization. We have a, a forest troll that is very nurturing, he, which has a lot of mice and squirrels and stuff living inside of him. And maybe he will uh, throw beehives at people. And uh, we have bones, which is this spirit bound to a skeleton and to a sword that doesn't quite remember uh, what he is, but he knows he has a mission. He needs to get back to where, he, uh, to where his promise was made. I think this is our party. I would like to end here this episode, and then to in the week we can uh, fine tune can the, the sheets for the for the next sessions. Uh, do you have any last minute questions for for the system uh, altogether? For uh, what we are going to play? Do we want to make? Uh, do we want to tell someone to the audience uh, uh, that? Uh, it's a different kind of uh, role play game that uh, we are playing this campaign to explain exactly how it works <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah. so don't be scared with the, with the first. <laughs> I think it will be, become very clear when we start playing.
Yeah, yes, so, uh, yes, I think so. I think so. It's pretty so. It becomes clear in, in, in a matter of minutes. Once but I think uh, in this few minutes, of, in, this, in this hour, I think it was already clear that how we started thinking, okay, let's do a fantasy game. But at the end of the day, we or, or the night, we have something kind of different, I would say. I think it's a story that we have more to do with things that are, have less to do with sword and magics and whatever. Uh, we have spent a, lot, big, a great deal of time talking about how we feel and how the world reacts to that. And I think that's a good starting point. And I'm definitely eager to start doing that, to start playing, I mean. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you, guys. Definitely. So uh, we will uh, see you guys on the, ne the next episode. Uh, I hope uh, you were able to follow our English. <laughs> I hope uh, yeah, it uh, it was clear enough. I hope uh, uh, you we interest you in the game enough to tune in uh, the next time. Uh, I'm Fabio. Marco. Arturo. Vincenzo. And uh, see you guys. Bye. 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 Have a good one.